welcome to the Bethany Esports Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Barr. Now, the Bethany Esports Podcast is a student-run venture to give people updates on the current happenings of the Bethany Esports team. And this week, in this first episode, I had the opportunity to sit down with the two heads of operations at Bethany Esports, Seth Grabo and Lucas Fricky, to kind of explain to people what Bethany Esports is, what it can do for students, and what we have to do this summer to even get ready for this first year. Just you know, I just hit record just now. How's the thoughts sound? for How's your voice? thoughts? How's my voice? It sounds like a voice. It's a voice. Well, I mean, is it loud enough? You're always loud enough. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> now I'm starting to worry about the heart I sang you on the... I'm, I'm slightly concerned. Oh. <laughs> so, I have now joining me Lucas Fricky and Seth Gray. Start over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm not even going to cut. It's just okay. straight through. All right. Fine. Okay. Now joining me, I have Lucas Fricky and Seth Grabo. Uh, how you doing? I'm well. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I'm great. Thanks. Yeah. So I just want to have a few questions about the Bethany Esports team since it's a new venture. Mm-hmm. Let people know what's mm-hmm. happening. Yep. So uh, I just got a few questions going. Um, my first one is just simple. What is Bethany Esports? Um, Bethany Esports is us launching varsity esports at Bethany Lutheran College uh, for fall of 2019. Yeah, uh, we had in 2018, we had a club formed on campus by a bunch of students. Lucas, I think you are the advisor, faculty advisor yes, for sir. that. And uh, the administration had been toying with the idea for an esports team for a couple of years to my understanding. And then we just kind of moved forward and Lucas and I knew quite a bit about esports and lived in that world. So we... Uh, kind of heading it up yeah. now. Yeah, I think so. the, the right answer is it's the culmination of years of grassroots efforts mm-hmm. to get esports started on our campus. Bethany's always had a strong esports presence for gamers and not only just students, but also faculty. Uh, we even have famous alumni like Doa, mm-hmm. who makes makes a killing doing esports and it's just something that's always been on campus. And I don't know, president said there's years and years and years since he got here, which is four years ago now, mm-hmm. that people have been in his ear about it, and this is it's finally coming to fruition. Uh, I think Jeff, Seth, and I, were, we took all that stuff, Took we had a small opportunity, and we just, you know, had an inch and took it a mile. So, yeah. And I feel like that actually answers my second question I was going to ask, it, and this was, was ugh, it was, why an esports team? Yeah, it more or less answers that question. Right. Yeah. Um, it was just a lot of administration have noticed that like video games and esports has been like a thing on campus for ten plus years. Like there's always been very talented video game players on campus, and they saw an opportunity with this with the students and and Jeff Lemke and Lucas and myself and. Like Lucas said, gave us an inch and we took a mile. So, mm-hmm. yeah, to put in perspective on that, um, no other school has Eric Adoa like we do. Um, and then we have on our campus currently a ma- for League of Legends, we have a master tier player and a diamond one player. And we're a school of less than a thousand students. A lot of schools that are, you know, five times our size might have one of those levels of players for their League of Legends team. So, we just something about Bethany just attracts gamers. <laughs> but high pitch noise. Anyway, continue. Mm-hmm. That was weird. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, um, my next question is: Is what could this esports team provide for students? Because like, it seems almost like it's just like a club thing, almost just slightly competitive or fully competitive. But what could it provide students in the long run? Well, so short term, like right now, esports is housed. So it's not housed in athletics. It's housed in student life. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is because we have a huge esports presence on campus. It also means we have a huge video game presence on campus. We lose students like every other school does to video game addiction every year. So the the way that we got this ball rolling was, hey, we're going to get these guys 
oops, sorry. We're going to get these guys out of the dorm and gals out of the dorms and into a room where they're going to be structured, supervised, and, you know, encouraged to study and go to class and those kinds of things. Like incentivized to do their schoolwork as well as play video games. Uh, uh, to go along with that, um, a major thing that kind of culminates or goes together with the whole esports thing at Bethany is we have a well-established and uh, a well-established broadcast program and a lot of students like yourself Robert who are part of that program um, are very interested in esports on the broadcasting side of it which is another huge opportunity for Bethany because there are schools who are 10 times the size of us who are very good at esports and in the competitive scene but don't really advertise or broadcast like in both the the literal verb sense and and the other sense of of just how do we get the message out you know like a lot of schools don't take it in my opinion don't take advantage of how talented and how much work and effort they put in like they do i can see it from just the few Mm -hmm. posts on twitter but there could be so much more and i think that's the biggest opportunity for us right now is to we'll be We'll take a very good and well-established esports program with a lot of backing from the administration, with our established broadcast program, and marry them yeah. together and and really get the word out and the message out. Yeah, when you, I mean, especially in the last two years, I mean, since I've been here, it's I've seen it grown myself. When when you say Bethany in the community, people think TV and people think broadcasting, and everybody knows that. That's where TV's going is to live sports, especially esports is the new thing, and we're just jumping all in on that component of it for our students. Mm-hmm. Um, when we are out recruiting, we're not just recruiting top players to play. We're recruiting students who are interested in being a part of um, things like podcasts, <laughs> uh, things like publications, mm-hmm. things like video, hype videos, documentaries. Um, social media. Social media, yeah. Anything along those lines that is involved in the behind-the-scenes production of, of esports. And it really helps that um, Eric Lanquistoa is all for that and all behind that because that's how he got his start was in was in the broadcast program and now he's a famous one of the more famous esports broadcasters of all time, yeah. and it's it just got, totally makes sense to yeah. So it's not just like that's the other thing that's really goes well when we recruit. We're not just selling kind of a pie in the sky. Hey, this no, we have proof. You know, we have a track record. We have we have dough up. Mm-hmm. So, um, kind of off, like a, another opportunity that we offer students for esports, if you're done with that mm-hmm. yeah. broadcast oh. component, is um, we also, like, we're building a winner um, for for the major games. That's something that our broadcasting component attracts a variety of students, but our actual competitive competitive teams and the way that Seth and I run the program has been really attractive to very high-level players. Um, for League of Legends in particular, we're talking top five challenger players, uh, grandmaster players, diamond one players. I mean, our team MMR average will be master tier next year already. Our um, first year. Our first year, yeah, and with almost all freshmen on the team. And that's just because of the environment that we've established, the expectations and the vision for our program. The culture, yeah. Yeah, there you go, the culture. And the extra <laughs> if, opportunities that you have. Right. With, like, broadcasting and stuff. Because exactly. they, these these very high-level players, they see, like, you know, we can go anywhere to play, but they mm-hmm. they, they, they strive for that excellence, and, you know, they, they see the, the I don't want to say opportunity, but the, the excitement behind, yep. you know, not just, hey, where, you know, every other school who's done esports has thrown some money into a room, have, have done this, but they're like, well, okay, what sets you apart? And when they even hear, like, hey, we're this broadcasting, oh, by the way, Doa came through the same thing, and yep. you all know who he is because of his some of his most famous calls, and now he's on Overwatch League, um, but and League of Legends before that. But um, that's what really attracts them, and I think that's what, like, catches everyone's ears and eyes of, of what sets Bethany apart or what will set Bethany apart. And you have this, like, student drive to – go out of their way to do something like I'm yeah. doing a On podcast right now will. because I want to do this because I'm totally. excited about this. Yep. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Let me, I mean, let me take you through our, like our vision here when this, when this stuff goes, um, because another reason we attract those top players is we make them feel like they've made it when they get here. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I think of my wife plays roller derby and I used to play football. And one of the coolest parts about roller derby for, for ladies and football for men is that it doesn't matter your body type, your size, your, you know, there's a spot for you somewhere, right? Big guys play the line, small guys kick mm -hmm. and run fast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, for our esports program, um, it doesn't matter if you're iron or, you know, top five challenger, we have opportunities for you. So the passion is there. It's similar for everyone. Everyone that comes is obviously passionate about esports. For our top level players, we make them feel like they've made it. We give them their hours worth. I mean, they get the they get a pro player treatment experience here. They're rock stars on campus. Uh, we do podcasts with them. Uh, we get them in publications. We just did uh, signing interviews yeah. uh, through that social media. Those yep. are getting retweeted constantly by family and friends. They're really cool. Yep. Um, for the second kind of tier players, there's um, t tons of competition for those who are trying to make our varsity squads. Um, there's opportunities for them to compete on uh, other leagues. We're allowed to run three varsity teams right now. Um, you know, we have our main team, uh, master tier average, but we're going to have other teams as well. Who knows, maybe platinum average, gold average, bronze average, doesn't matter. Um, but for those guys, too, who don't have as much time to invest in the competition, I mean, they'll, those students will get the experience of training, watching VOD review, having like personal coaching, intensive coaching, um, they're going to be able to maximize their potential, which a lot of students want. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, we get a lot of people who are say, look, I play it on a laptop. I have terrible Wi-Fi. I'm silver one right now, but I know I can be better. Like I want to maximize that. They have, a, they have a spot here too. And then for students who are like, I'm in band, I'm on the baseball team, but I love esports. I mean, we still have opportunities for guys and girls like that, you know, running the podcasts especially at the club level too yep. who just want to be involved in the the community events that we'll be throwing you know throw up actual greater mankato community but as well on campus as well as on campus yeah and like the main thing is it's all student driven i mean our everything every decision we've made from the chairs we purchased to the room design to our specs and those things that's all been done with a lot of student input involved in that decision so mm -hmm. yeah speaking of chairs uh there, I yeah. built 15. Yeah, so. uh, we're very appreciative for yeah, that. So Robert was, uh, volunteered on his own free will to put together <laughs> yeah, our, yeah. our very nice chairs. chairs from Secret yes. Labs. Yeah, it took me three days. Student labor so. is the best labor. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, from a certain perspective, but. from 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 non-student perspective, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the people that don't have to build its perspective. Yeah. Well, thank uh, you for doing that. Yeah, yeah. we're very appreciative. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah weird as that might seem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh i have just one last question and since you have this huge vision and this is going to be it's like first year being a thing mm -hmm. what do we have to do this summer to even get ready for this next year and sure. like the first year of esports sure so the big thing is obviously getting the space ready like that's the the obvious the obvious answer so from yeah. purchasing chairs which you graciously put together um to purchasing computers desks painting the room, putting, you know, a mini fridge in, you know, all the little details that, that make, uh, make everyone feel special. And um, I heard there might be a possibility of tearing down a wall to make a bigger space or that is, that, is, is that not yet? That's not yet this year. Okay. Um, you know, we're, we don't want to get a, put the cart in front of the horse, First, but, yeah. um, oh, you know, we're hoping <laughs> to get there very quickly, um, to expand the room. You know, that's already, you know, you can't avoid the the elephant in the room of, hey, this is going to explode on campus with the amount of effort and attention to detail that everyone who's been a part of the whole uh, esports um, meetings and all the cabinet meetings. Um, but it's not this year, but we're hoping, you know, the sooner the better, you know, if, as soon as that takes off. Yeah. But um, getting back, you know, the other answers to what, what, how we get ready is, you know, thinking about establish the big thing for me as the coach would be establishing the player culture you know like um i i've been reading a ton of things online and ordered a couple books recently i'm like what is what is coaching how do you establish this culture how do you you know like if you think of a big sports school for you know college football or basketball like what do you think of oh this team makes the tops the sweet 16 and ncaa tournament for basketball every year like that's just how do they get that? What is the culture? What is the yeah. drive? What is the passion behind that? So for me, the big thing is establishing a culture, day zero, and finishing the room. And then uh, also, um, either this year and years in the, a couple years in the future, going down the road, expanding our, our whole broadcast capabilities for the room, 
more cameras, audio interviews, you know, you know, you need, you know, for hosts or whatever, if we, when we get to that point, you need someone who's obviously knowledgeable in the sport. You can't just say, Hey, that was a good win. What do you think? Like, you know, you need a little bit more meat and potatoes than just, uh, yeah. than just the bread in my opinion. Yeah. We have uh, great examples for us that we get to work with. Seth works with uh, the MSU hockey, you know, they're, ranked two in the nation this year and mm -hmm. he gets to be there live and see how involved their head coach is with every single detail mm -hmm. like can't down to camera angles replays right yep and uh you know that's a great example and then also on campus we have coach fletcher and coach perrin from basketball you know we're a d3 powerhouse now in basketball in two years i mean they arrived here what two years ago two three years ago yeah and one they had won the won the conference and won a tournament game against St. John's, you know, and now we're known for basketball. And we use those examples um, and mentoring from those people to, to help us drive our culture a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, as far as getting ready, that's on our end. Uh, we also have players need to get ready over the summer. Yep. Uh, so we're, there's no regulations on how much they can play or what they can play. We're um, our ADC right now. Our AD carry for league of legends is in Korea. He messaged me the other day. He's playing eight games a day, uh, working on some team strategies. Uh, we're encouraging each player to improve in certain specific ways to be ready for the fall and get them ready to compete. And then, like Seth said, just getting ourselves ready through um, finding more mentors, learning. We're going to a couple conferences this summer uh, to learn more about Esports, coaching, gaming, directing, that stuff too. Technology, uh, mm -hmm. infrastructure. And not just like the players, but like I know out like two weekends ago, I just watched Seth play some league and oh. I was shoutcasting his games because yeah. I wanted to learn how to shoutcast. Yeah. Nice. And I watched three games because yep. he only played about three games that I saw. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, the love. And that's more that's of awesome. my fault for not having enough friends on my list to <laughs> keep watching. So. Hey, no one has friends. It's gaming. <laughs> No, yeah, um, there's just there's a lot of details to get out, and Seth and I have been putting in a lot of hours. Um, it doesn't show. It's one of those things that we could just sit back, right, mm. and we could just let esports recruit themselves. I mean, it's not hard to walk up to some students and say, hey, you like video games? You want to come? Yeah. Um, but we really put in a ton of man hours into getting every single detail this right. I mean, just today we spent two hours in the room yep. talking about what the paint's going to look like, what the backdrop's going to look like. Dave Norris was down with Leah, mm -hmm. and they were telling us their design ideas. I mean, that's all Seth stuff, giving input. Um, <laughs> you should see my, my room. Uh, but, you know, just down to every detail, you know, and it's really it's been really rewarding, really challenging, but it's been awesome. Mm -hmm. so. I, I only introduced you as uh, individuals, but I never actually gave you your roles because I didn't actually fully know which were your roles. How about you just give that real quick? Sure. So I'm Seth Grabo. I would be the coach, and also I kind of consider myself the general manager of Bethany Esports. Yeah, and my name is Lucas Fricky, and I am the director of esports at Bethany, and then I also help out with coaching for League of Legends and other games too. Our Yeah, our titles were sort of stolen from or from the recommendations from NACE of what you need as far as your yeah. right staffing goes. Uh, but we're both heavily involved in pretty much every aspect. Seth's really good at technology, being a general manager. Um, mm -hmm. Like he ordered the chairs, for example, and designing the room. You know, where, you know I, I do a lot more recruiting, a mm -hmm. lot more texting the students, being with the students, developing relationships with the students, um, and more like the gaming side of things for now. And then in the fall, we'll, you know, we're, we're like a team. We work mm. together. That makes so, sense. Yeah. And I thank you for joining yeah, me to give, like, yeah. this introduction of what esports is at Bethany. So. Yeah, we're very appreciative. You took a lot of yeah. time and effort to set up the, the cameras and the, the audio setup here. So. It, it was a chore because yeah. I found out audio interfaces don't take too. Not, these a, little, not the little ones. No, nope, no. Nope. Got to pull out a board. Yeah. Yep. And get... luckily our school has a bunch that I could just – Take out too. <laughs> yep. Shameless plug. Thanks, but... Bethany. Yeah, and yeah. I got to get a makeup crew next time. <laughs> yeah, for me. I could just cut the video <laughs> if you really want me to. Yeah. So, how do you want to be involved, Robert? I just love the like behind the scenes aspect. Like this podcast, I 
when growing up in like eighth grade, I found this one podcast. I listened to the entirety of its catalog at least four times through because yeah. I just love the like mm-hmm. people conversing about things they like. So this conversation, I enjoy esports and conversing with you about it. Mm. I just get an enjoyment out of that. Mm-hmm. Totally. That's and then awesome. like being on the production side of going through Bethany for a bit, I found like these hype things, watching esports, this like big events that they make. I want to be someone that could be a part of that, even if it's like, for lack of a better word, smaller scale. Yeah. And you've given me an opportunity in like my last semester. Mm-hmm. So I'm diving full in on my last semester's capstone into this like production for Bethany Esports. And I hope I can maybe come back in spring, even if I'm still not a student and still do something. Yeah, totally. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It's just a great example of how even in its infancy, you know, this this is good for everybody. I mean, it's giving you an opportunity to, yeah. you know, and use so your many talents people, and a passion. So many people uh, on campus and around the community have like, met, like on our social media posts on Facebook and Twitter and stuff, people have, and Instagram especially, have reached out and said like, didn't know this was a thing. Like, you guys mm-hmm. are going to kill it. Just people I never thought I'd hear from again. Like, super excited for us, which I think is crazy cool yeah we have there's just a ton of energy the response has been overwhelmingly positive um one of the the setbacks setbacks one of the the things that was hanging up esports at bethany was fear of uh public reaction or public perception once it got rolling and we haven't had from yeah from the community and alumni but we haven't really had any kickback like everyone's just been doesn't matter if you're planning on coming to Bethany in two years, like your junior in high school this coming fall, mm-hmm. or you graduated 20, 30 years ago. Like people are still just super all for it and behind it and have seen that and heard about the opportunities and are getting on the, yeah. getting the, getting behind the energy. Yeah, it's so cool is that we just have involvement from every area of campus. I mean, whether it's academics, sponsor, you know, um, Chris for uh, advancement, advancement, Jeff and recruiting, Jeff and financial aid, um, Greg with broadcasting, Seth with broadcasting, um, Jason with academics, even President Pfeiffer uh, went and saw Eric Verdoa at Overwatch Studios to get an idea of what's going on with esports. I mean, just the involvement, it's from the top down. And uh, there's just so much energy because everyone feels like they have a piece. Everyone feels like they have a piece, like they own esports. Every single you know, pretty much every single VP on campus mm-hmm. and every single department on campus, when this is going, will be able to look at it and feel like they own it in yeah. some way. And yeah. that's 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 why there's so much energy about it and it's not going to go away. Well, I thank you for joining me. I'll probably like talk to you within a month from now, whether you be on or if it's by yeah. myself to see how far or further in and we'll, I'll hopefully put up another one. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule because you just came from that meeting, like you said. <laughs> yep, so. yep. Yep. Yeah, so, we're off to a tournament today. So Yeah, and you recruiting. had some, I won't say anything about it, oh, but you had okay. some personal issues that you had to deal with. So this oh. was stretched a little longer than I hoped. But Yeah, my wife had a had a fall. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. It's She's okay. doing better now, which is good. Yeah, so I thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. I just want to thank Seth and Lucas for taking time out of their busy schedules to sitting down and conversing with me and explaining to people what Bethany Esports is. Now, I also want to, right before sending off, explain what this podcast is. Um, like I said at the top, this is a student-run venture. I am Robert Barr, like I always also said at the beginning. Um, I'm a senior at Bethany, got one semester left, and hearing about esports, and we're getting an esports team, I was so excited because video gaming and esports were a big part of me growing up, much to the disappointment of my parents, but that's a different topic. Um, so I just wanted to go full in and experience esports, maybe not as a player, but as a person that enjoys it and wants to enjoy it with other people. So this podcast is one of those ways I wanted to enjoy it is I wanted to converse with the players. I want to converse with the teams. I want to converse with the clubs, the groups, just talking about the passions we have in a way that I could just, in a way, use schoolwork and free time and passion of just stuff that we enjoy and create this podcast with people. Now, I'm going to explain how I'm just planning this podcast out. This is tentative. It could change later. I After this one, this is a summer update where I explain um, what's going on, and I have interviews with people and talk about what we're doing this summer in Bethany Esports. 
Now I got two more updates planned for the coming months. And then during the school year, I have one regular show planned every week where, like I said, I take a player, a group, a team, a club, something that was interesting that happened that week. We get all together and we sit down and we talk about stuff. That's basically it. It's just a podcast where we talk about our passions. Now, I want to thank you for joining us in this first episode of Bethany Esports, and I hope to see you again in future episodes. And for more information on Bethany Esports, you can follow us on the main social media sites of Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Bethany Esports. And you can also follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash blcesports. Thank you. I will hope to see you again. Oh, and by the way, I'm, uh, as you can tell, not a professional when it comes to this. And I hope to learn more by doing this podcast and getting better at it. And I hope you're there with me while we learn how to do this. Thank you and uh, hope to see you again.